the first award that we are going to, um, to give out is the Alice Hamilton Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, this award recognizes the lifelong contributions of individuals who have distinguished themselves through a career of hard work and dedication to improve the lives of workers. And to introduce our award recipient this year, I'm going to turn it over to Glenn Shore. I met Chip in 1978 when I was working in DC at the US Department of Labor researching occupational disease compensation. And Chip was the research director for the Carolina Brown Lung Association. In amending the co-workers pneumoconiosis or black lung compensation program, the US Congress wanted to know if there were other occupational diseases that weren't being handled well by state workers compensation programs. Spoiler alert, there are and there were. OSHA's cotton dust standard reducing legal exposure by 80% had just been published, but cotton textile workers weren't being compensated when they contracted bisonosis on the job. CHIP was contracted by our office as a purchase order, a $10,000 research grant to investigate the situation in North and South Carolina. This study became a crucial component of our interim report to Congress on occupational disease. One of CHIP's findings was the difficulty that brown lung victims had in getting medical doctors to diagnose their conditions as caused by their work, and the importance of presumptive standards to help workers through the gauntlet of compensation hearings. CHIP understood the importance of government service with a sustained interest on behalf of working people. One of the high points of my federal career was a 1980 letter from CHIP thanking me for helping him get access to some DOL data and calling me a responsive bureaucrat, a label I cherished during my 40 years in government. Then Ronald Reagan got elected president and any progress toward occupational disease compensation victims through federal programs ceased. As a soon to be laid off federal worker, I helped Chip liberate hundreds of copies of the cotton dust brochure featuring a heartfelt picture of Lewis Harrell before OSHA had thorn off or had them collected and destroyed. Two years after Reagan's election, I had moved to California and got a postcard from Chip. It read, Dear Policy Doctor, I have an ailment common to overeducated late 20th century males in the USA. I'm unemployed. The market economy doesn't appreciate my many talents and skills. Can you look into your crystal policy ball for a different differential diagnosis, angst, malaise, excessive expectations? How do they treat such a disease out West? Hot tubs, shrinks, lobotomies? Well, Chip eventually found a job that appreciated his many skills and talents. His incredible support of so many of us through research and education, APHA and other worker activism, and NIAHS worker training against tech savvy, generosity, his incredible enthusiasm for life has made for my most meaningful, sustainable friendship. Chip has broadened my life immeasurably and I am so honored to introduce him for this Lifetime Achievement Award. Good afternoon. I wanna first give thanks to all of my APHA worker safety colleagues for this really meaningful peer recognition. Um, it, it, it really uh, means a lot to me and um, it's really important um, to be able to be recognized by our peers. Um, I next want to share some of my journey from my scrapbook and give thanks to those who have helped me along the way. I will admit unabashedly to being a child of the 1960s. I began the decade supporting a uncle who was running for president at the time and ended it by dropping out of college to work in the civil rights movement in Southwest Georgia with SNCC. Now along the way, two slogans were imprinted upon me. The one we all know about asking not and serving your country and the other one about being realistic and demanding the impossible. Of course, both of them live on um, within me today. 
The day after I graduated from college, I began my first job with the United Mine Workers in Harlan County, Kentucky. Working on the Brookside strike against Duke Power, I discovered which side I was on. Actually, um, while singing the song, Which Side Are You On, with Florence Reese, the actual author of the song in 1912. The UMWA winning the bloody Brookside strike then led to the Brown Lung Movement in textiles, the anti-slavery campaign in the fields of the East Coast migrant stream, and a widening awareness of the scope of worker oppression. Next, I received an unexpected phone call that led to another difficult to imagine request. Would you be willing to work for the federal government? Uh, with great thanks uh, to Denny Dobbin, to Don Ellisberg, and to David Rawl, I embarked on the next part of my adventure, which has lasted over 30 years. A few memories, some thank yous, and some shout outs. The World Trade Center cleanup was probably one of the saddest chapters of preventable damage to so many thousands of workers. Large-scale disasters have, have really defined our historical era, uh, from Sandy to Harvey to uh, Deepwater Horizon to the sad tragedy of Maria in beloved Puerto Rico. We all have learned and embraced the term resilience the way that we must carry on and build back better, and even hugging virtually those around us. In this endeavor, as in all in life, it takes a team and a family and a village, and I cherish each of those uh, that have been part of making me uh, what I am. I think the thing that I'll miss the most and cherish are the worker trainer exchanges where hundreds gathered together to share knowledge and skills and make a real difference in the workplace. But the beat must go on and ergo Elvis lives and breathes and creates and spews forth. And I know that he will continue doing that. I myself move forward with incredible optimism for our movement as I seek the type of internal peace to sustain the struggle for justice along with all of you. And now I'd like to share a few of the things that I've learned over the way, uh, my top 10. The ongoing struggle of worker health and safety crosses many generations in life stages. Whether you're a geezer or a boomer or a Gen Xer, find mentors to guide you and then be a mentor to guide others. Keep the movement alive across generations. Know how to make good trouble as John Lewis taught us in SNCC. Find other comrades rods to join you in the lifetime journey as we all have done in our section. Community organizing and building political power are the utmost importance, no matter where you sit or live or work. Organizing for political power is a key life skill and the lifeblood of any movement. Always make sure that the voices of the dead and the disabled are at the table when decisions are being made about worker safety and health especially those that will impact on future generations. Eula Bingham and many other workers who have passed on from premature deaths will always be with me and in my heart and my soul. Peer learning, as Pablo Freire taught us, is the best form of education and training, no matter how complicated or technical the content may be. Worker trainers are the most important resource that we have for the health and safety movement. There are hundreds of them across the country. They need your support. As I've learned, fighting for the heart and soul of the government is a key struggle for assuring worker safety and health. It's not only about making democracy work, but it's also about protecting life and health. Whether you're a civil servant like me or a citizen or a taxpayer, demanding social services, health protections, and protecting civil rights is a part of everyone's job. Numbers, statistics, and data must be turned into stories of life and death. As we know from the COVID, every data point is a reflection and summation of a precious life, a family, and a community. The simple drama of workers' lives is the story that must be told simply 
clearly and quantitatively. Fighting for racial justice and eliminating the vestiges of white supremacy must underlie all of the work that we do every day. The strength of our movement for worker safety and health grows out of the diversity of the voices and our vision for connecting issues and constituencies. Eighth, mental, physical, and spiritual health are all key components of worker health and must be addressed holistically in our personal, family, community, and workplace lives. The opioids crisis in the workplace and the COVID pandemic have made addressing deaths of despair a critical public health crisis that will need to be focused on by all of us. Likewise, COVID-19 has educated our entire nation and our world about the critical importance of protecting essential workers, be they tribal, gig, part-time, undocumented, unionized, or immigrants. We need to capitalize on this mass consciousness to catalyze new campaigns and initiatives for creating and sustaining worker protections. The climate crisis, and especially its impact on the workplace, is the greatest existential threat as a species on our planet that we face. Gathering allies, building coalitions, creating initiatives, and taking to the streets is just another part of our essential responsibility as global citizens of the planet. I hope that we all, along with the next generation, will continue to make important contributions to preventing occupational related illness and injuries. We will continue to work in the forefront, developing innovative programs to prepare and protect workers in high risk occupations. Since September 11, 2001, our nation has been forced to take a closer look at how we respond to disasters, how we protect the health and safety of workers, and how to better prepare ourselves in the event of future disasters like COVID-19 and the climate crisis. In fighting the pandemic, I know that we are still faced with an ongoing challenge in improving public health protections for all workers and all responders and all communities. This will be our legacy to future generations. And again, thank you all so much for this great honor of the Alice Hamilton Award. Shall we come off our mics and give Chip a huge round of applause? Congratulations! Congratulations. Congratulations, Chip. Uh, you really have made tremendous contributions. Uh, you know, I've had a tireless commitment to the field. It's really been great working with you and learning from you over the years. And I, I can't think of anyone who deserves this award more. So very nicely done. Thanks to all of you. I love working with you too, Kevin. Thank you.